Members? Members, the Right Honourable, the Lord Mayor. City of Adelaide Council meeting on Tuesday, the 8th of May 2018. The Lord Mayor is in the chair. This council meeting will be streamed live and recorded for publishing to the internet. Please note that an audio and visual recording is being taken of this meeting. This means that your presence at and any contribution you make to the meeting may be collected, used, disclosed or published publicly by the council, including transferring outside of Australia. The red light to my right indicates that the meeting is being filmed and streamed. Council acknowledges that we are meeting on the traditional country of the Kaurna people of the Adelaide Plains and pays respect to elders past and present. We recognise and respect their cultural heritage, beliefs and relationship with the land. We acknowledge that they are of continuing importance to the Kaurna people living today. We also extend that respect to other Aboriginal language groups and other First Nations who are present today. Council acknowledges the vision of Colonel William Light in determining the site for Adelaide and the design of the city with its six squares and surrounding belt of continuous parklands, which is recognised on the National Heritage List as one of the greatest examples of Australia's planning heritage. <laughs> Members, ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. Thank you, CEO and members. Welcome to the City of Adelaide Council meeting on Tuesday, the 8th of May, 2018. And members, we have a full complement of councillors this evening, so I'm going to presume that Councillor Wilkinson is indeed in transit, and I'm going to presume that Councillor Moran is going to shortly return to the chamber. Members, item four, which is confirmation of minutes. Members, we've got to confirm the minutes from a uh, regular meeting, the Colonel Light Special Council meeting and a Council meeting, a Special Council meeting following out on the 1st of May. Can I please have a move, please, men members, to move, carry those minutes, moved by Councillor Martin, seconded by Councillor Slama. Any queries or questions about the minutes, members? In absence of, I'll put that directly to you. Those in favour? Those against? We will carry the minutes from those three previously held meetings. Members, item five is public forums and deputations of which we had no requests for such. So I will take you on to item six, which is advice from the Adelaide Parklands Authority and reports from other committees. Welcome, Councillor Wilkinson. There are none of those also, which takes us on to item 7.1. And members, before we debate item 7.1, I will declare a material con uh, conflict of interest and I will hand the chair to Deputy Lord Mayor Vershaw. Um, members, item 7.1, World City Summit, July 2018. <coughs> Moved by Councillor Abia, second by Councillor Clarahan. Any discussion? Um, look, I think this is a, a great opportunity to be able to real push um, uh, give out like the message of push internationally, especially around the tanking city and the smart city approach. Obviously, uh, it's it's really echoing well around the world. Some of the stuff we're doing, and to actually have the opportunity for the board mayor to be involved in that, I think, uh, goes a very long way in pushing the city agenda from an economic development perspective and potential partnerships. So, I think it's very important for us to uh, support this initiative. Floor members, Councillor Clarence, Councillor Thank you, Deputy Lord Mayor. I just wanted to say that um, 
Yeah. But not only are there economic opportunities, but there are also other opportunities. Um, and given the place of Singapore in terms of um, its amazing work with sustainability and greening, uh, there are huge opportunities there for our Lord Mayor uh, to bring something back to us. But most importantly, it is also a fantastic stage on which to promote the achievements of the City of Adelaide and especially related to our 10, um, 10 gig city. Uh, I think we need to not be backward in coming forward in terms of some of our great achievements. And of course the other thing is um, our sister city of Georgetown and Penang, uh, the Lord Mayor in this situation will be able to undertake two commitments uh, at the same time. Uh, and I, given that he did receive an invitation in January from, from the Mayor uh, of Penang, I think this is a, a terrific opportunity where, given he's in the vicinity, it makes perfectly good sense uh, for us to um, pursue uh, our relationship with our sister cities and look for, other, for any opportunity where we can support each other, be it commercially or business in a business sense or education on a, uh, in particular uh, and culturally. So I totally support um, the Lord Mayor attending these two events. Have I said something wrong? No. no. Thank you, Councillor Curry. Uh, Councillor Summer. Thank you, Chair. In, in relation to the investor round table in Singapore, um, just a quick question through administration, what support uh, from administration we have there that will travel with him. Thank you, Councillor. CEO? In three of all, at this stage we haven't finalised the arrangements, but I imagine that we will have someone accompany the Lord Mayor, so um, there will be administrative support provided. But only because I think it's important that, that he does have that. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any other questions from the floor? Uh, Councillor Abia. Thank you, Sondra. Sondra. Um, can I have a vote, please? Thank you. In favour, against? Thank you. Thank you, Deputy Lord Mayor. Thank you, members. Uh, members, I'll take you directly to item 7.2, which is a uh, item regarding the extension of the loan of the Fugue by Greg Johns, which is page 90 on papers. Uh, you've got a recommendation to approve and authorise. I look to the floor. Councillor Clarehan, your moving is printed, seconded by Councillor Hendon. Any debate, members? Councillor Clarehan? Yes, Lord Mayor, I was at the unveiling of uh, this particular sculpture um, titled The Fugue by one of our South Australian sculptors, Greg Johns, um, and also um, to, um, you know, in memory of one of our uh, local winemakers. Um, and it's a fantastic sculpture in that location. The Art Gallery of South Australia worked very closely with the Adelaide City Council in finding an appropriate location. And it sits on the corner of Victoria Drive and Frode Road and is indeed um, a fantastic addition to our public art in this city. So I'm absolutely thrilled uh, that we're able to extend our arrangement with the Art Gallery of South Australia. Thank you, Councillor Clearhand. Councillor Hendy, you seconded? Yeah. Councillor Wilkinson. I'd just like to add to uh, those words from Councillor Clarehan, um, the Trudell family who had, um, I think, donated the, uh, the, the fugue, uh, attended the, uh, the, uh, the opening of that, which was, um, when it was done, so I wholeheartedly support the motion. Thank you, Councillor. And members, I'll also pay um, tribute to Mr Ed Trudell, who was a great South Australian. Uh, no further comment? 
Councillor Clarion, <coughs> members, I put this matter before you. Those in favour? Those against? We carry item 7.2 on your agenda. Members, item 7.3 is a it's the annual business plan for the uh, page 18 of the papers for APLA uh, to endorse, moved by Councillor Aviard, seconded by Councillor Moran. Councillor Aviard, do you wish to speak to the matter? Councillor Moran, do you wish to speak to the matter? Members, any debate? Councillor Aviard? Members, I put this before you. Those in favour? Those against? Thank you, members. We carry item 7.3. Members, item 7.4 is for approvals, the draft community consultation policy. Moved by Councillor Abiyad and seconded by Councillor Clarehan. Councillor Abiyad, do you wish to speak to item 7.4? Councillor Clarehan? Um, I think this is a really important policy document and it actually impacts on absolutely everything we do in council which requires um, us to uh, receive input from community and stakeholders. And I note that we've sort of cleaned it up a bit. We've looked at uh, the current legislation and we've included um, information on how we must address uh, the legislated requirement to consult on various things. But we've also cited the importance of providing how important it is to provide information to our community and our stakeholders so that they are able to make informed decisions and decisions that are in context with our strategic plan. I do, and, and that is absolutely significant. Um, I also appreciate uh, the feedback from those people who have responded to the consultation on our consultation policy. Uh, and I'm also very impressed with the way in which we've been able to incorporate that feedback into our current policy. I also understand that there will be further uh, consultation and further work by our administration on our engagement now, is that a policy or a strategy, uh, our engagement strategy? And I think that's where we will be in a position to ensure that the quality of our consultation meets community expectation. Uh, I do note that we removed the requirement uh, for council to notify uh, the community of consultation in a local paper and in the state uh, circulated paper, i.e. the advertiser. But as people responded, and appropriately too, they said, well, Adelaide City Council is our capital city council, and we would appreciate knowing what is going on in our city, capital city council, and also uh, appreciate having an opportunity to respond uh, and provide feedback as well. So I really appreciate that we've actually incorporated that now back into our policy. I think that is very significant. Um, I did have a question, Lord Mayor, about the um, the use of data and whether um, whether we need to make any overarching statement about um, any data that we collect, um, whether that how we might use that, uh, whether we circulate it, sell it, or whether we need to predict. The, um, the details, and I, I didn't actually pick that up, but I could be wrong. Council, would you like to direct that question through the CEO? CEO? Yeah, I'll ask Tracy to respond to that. Thanks. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Um, you, we will actually address that in the strategy document. So the, the policy is um, more closely aligned to the Act and um, will reflect the, the data collection um, and um, use of in the strategy document. Terrific. Thank you very much and thank you for such a, a concise and crisp policy. Uh, many will appreciate that. Thank you, Councillor Clarehan. Councillor Wilkinson. Um, I just want to reinforce the words of Councillor Clarehan about the importance of the uh, print, print media to let people know what we're doing. Um, and um, also, uh, 
just you know, the people have to start to think about when we consult that we provide specific information because when we consult with very broad general motherhood statements, um, we often don't get much engagement with the community. So it's imperative that we have specific things that people can actually grab onto and say, I do or I don't like what council is proposing to do with that space. And that includes having clear illustrations and where appropriate of what we're doing, not just see go to website. Uh, so um, uh, I think that's most important we provide that specific information so that you get real engagement, which is going through the process and um, go through the motions. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. So, members, do I have any further debate on this item? Councillor Martin. Yeah, look, Lord Mayor, uh, I, I understand um, the remarks of those who have spoken before me, and I understand what uh, the administration was required to do in making this policy consistent with Section 50 of the Local Government Act. Um, but I, I won't be supporting it because most of the respondents, uh, at least the larger number of uh, organisations didn't support it, like uh, SECRA and SWECRA and uh, a submission from the North Adelaide Society also uh, raised some concerns about our processes. Um, they actually uh, lament, and I know that it is optional, and I know that the administration will from time to time place advertisements in the advertiser, but they uh, lament the reliance on uh, the messenger, which is no longer distributed to uh, uh, homes as it was in recent times. They say uh, also that uh, by not using the advertiser there will be a disenfranchisement of some South Australians living outside of Adelaide. Uh, for example, if community land management plans change in accordance with the table here, there will be uh, no way for people who live outside of the city to know anything about it unless um, they are informed by some other source. They regret the reliance on the Council USA website because the respondents say that there is no notification of consultation. So you have to actually know there's a consultation on to go to the USA website. And they say it would be much better if we provided advice to people that there was a consultation going through, through our records of people's submissions. Uh, they complain there's every chance that people uh, may submit multiple anonymous submissions. Uh, because no, no name or address is required. Um, and in addition, they ask why it is that this consultation process, which is in accordance with Section 50 of the Local Government Act, I understand, why it doesn't distinguish between respondents. So, for example, it's possible for someone who's concerned about greening in their street to make a submission in support. But it's possible for someone in North Queensland to say, no, I disagree with that, without actually explaining who they are, where they live, or why they have that view. All they do is stick the box say, no, I don't support it. And in conclusion, uh, no one mentions how the consultation process can be subverted, as it was, as we know, late last year, when a website ran a competition inviting people to submit uh, 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 to the consultation process in return for an entry into a competition with a prize. And no one here knew anything about it until well after the event when a ratepayer said, did you know this happened? So, uh, Lord Mayor, I, I think there are problems with the consultation policy and it's a problem I, I readily agree that affects every local government area in South Australia, but I think we need to do uh, something to address those concerns of the people who uh, submitted to the consultation. Okay, thank you, Councillor Martin. Uh, before I proceed with Councillor Hendra, I think the CEO just wants to make a comment. Yeah, yeah through you, Lord Mayor. Just a couple of comments we'd just like to make by way of clarity for Council members. I might just ask Tracy to do so. Thanks. Uh, through you, Lord Mayor. Through you, Lord Mayor. Um, just with regards to the um, the advertiser, we actually did put that section back into the policy so that um, we did respond directly to the feedback from the community and put that back into the policy. So that has um, has actually been addressed. If I could just ask, that is that is a voluntary thing, though. It doesn't happen uh, automatically with every consultation. Yeah, it's in the policy, it does. Oh, okay. Well, thank you. <laughs> okay. So, members, that matter's been clarified? Yes. Yes, it has. 
Thank you, Councillor Martin. Councillor Hender? Oh, so, Tracy, if you've got more information yes, you'd like to share? That, that's if it's required. And just with regards to your say, um, participants on your say actually have to register their details, their name and address details. So all of that information is actually captured. So if somebody from Queensland does actually um, go onto your say and get involved in a consultation, they have to register their details to be able to do so. So we capture that information. And does that also apply to people making written submissions? If they come through, you'll say, yes, it does. If it's a um, direct email um, or um, some other um, way that we've received that information, then um, not necessarily. But if it comes through, you'll say, then yes, absolutely it does. Thank you, councillors. Councillor I was just going to ask for that admin comment, which I've just got. Thanks. Okay, thank you. Members, do I have any further debate? Councillor Mulani. Just briefly, Lord Mayor. Um, Look, I think consultation is the most important thing that we do. We all agree around this chamber. Um, and sometimes consultation will change on the needs of the topic or the, the, the group that needs to be consulted based on whatever it is we're consulting on. I find it fascinating where we do consultation on the consultation policy, we get 10 submissions, and then Councillor Martin has the nerve to say, well, I don't, I'm not going to vote for it because if I don't, those 10 submissions didn't um, agree with the consultation on the consultation. I think we all need to be mindful of the fact that consultation will vary from time to time and we all have a job to do consultation and the administration has a job to do consultation. So. I find that I mean, we should we should vote for this because it sets a framework, but we all know that it'll change, and we all have to do our bit. and And we it's a flexible conversation, and the website does one job, and other parts of consultation do another job. So don't vote against this; just vote for it. It's a framework. It sets. Um, uh, an, an environment in which we're saying to the people, we're doing our best, this is what we want to do, but we're always going to customise it as we need to. Thank you, Councillor Milani. Now, no further hands. Councillor Aviard, you moved. Thank you, Councillor Members. I put this matter before you. Those in favour? Those against? Item carried. Members, I take you now to item 7.5 which is exclusion of the public requests and confidentiality orders, page 41 of your papers. You have a report to note. I look to you, members. Councillor Moran, seconded by Deputy Lord Mayor. Councillor Moran, do you wish to speak to this matter? I don't, so noted. DLM, do you wish to speak to this matter? Members, I look to the floor. Okay, before I send you back to your mover, Councillor Moran, to sum up, Members, I've looked at these numbers and you would see what I've seen, that in the last, certainly the last three years, in contrast to previous, we've seen a marked decline in the numbers of items which are now being treated in confidence as a quantum. And on every measure, request to exclude, agenda item subject of request heard in confidence, and the matter in part or in whole, across all three metrics. In the last three years, we've seen a decline in the, in the number of matters which have been heard in confidence. So I commend you on that, members, um, and I commend you on your commitment to transparency. So thank you. Notwithstanding, of course, members, that commercial and confidence matters, of course, will need to be dealt with in confidence at any term of council. I think that goes without saying. Councillor Moran. Yes, members, I put this matter before you. Those in favour, those against. We carry, so consider item 7.5 carried. Members, there are no emerging key risks for discussion in tonight's agenda, so I take you to questions on notice, which is item 8, of which there are nil registered. I looked for questions without notice. Councillor Moran, would you like to read your question, please, Councillor? Yes, and just to explain this, um, Lord Mayor, I had a motion on notice that uh, with advice from um, administration um, and information about your activities that are already commenced, uh, it was better to ask a, motion, a question without notice. Can administration please, please provide an update on what representations have been made to the new state government on council's position for the North Adelaide Large Institutions and Colleges Development Plan Amendment DPA, and can this DPA be raised as an agenda item at the Capital City Committee? 
Yeah, it's a question without notice, Councillor. Thank you, Councillor Moran. Um, CEO. Through Lord Mayor, look, I have got some comments I can make in response to that question. Uh, the North Adelaide Large Institutions um, and Colleges DPA was gazetted on the 30th of May 2017, as you'd be aware. The Lord Mayor made representations to the um, Environment, Resources and Development Committee of Parliament regarding Council's concerns uh, with, with the DPA relating to the expansion of the institutions and colleges cited, uh, sites on the 21st of June 2017. The former Minister of Planning, John Rowe, wrote to Council on the 22nd of September 2017, advising that he had considered the advice of the committee and decided not to make any changes to the DPA. Lord Mayor has continued to advocate Council's position regarding the expansion of the colleges and institutions beyond their sites, most recently to, the, to Minister Knoll on the 1st of May 2018. The most appropriate forum for discussing the subject of the DPA is directly with the Minister for Planning, being, the, being Minister Canole. Lord Mayor, you may wish to, to add further comment to that. Thank you, CEO. Thank you very much, Councillor Moran, for your question. It is indeed very timely. Um, members, you would be acutely aware of the concern about, after a two-year laborious process associated with the DPA of the 11 colleges and institutions throughout North Adelaide, that we were somewhat aghast to learn that they could then uh, apply the provisions of the said DPA to acquired sites, whether those sites are in fact adjoining their principal site <coughs> or whether those sites are within the wider precinct of North Adelaide. Now that is the current reality. As recently as 8 o'clock this morning, I've had another conversation with Minister Canole about this matter. I have explained in some detail to the Minister that this is um, business critical for North Adelaide and this is a matter of which we have an utterly united council in terms of expressing our concern. The phrase I used is that we currently have a beautiful residential suburb which contains some institutions but in 50 years time we could wake up and we could have a institutional suburb which may contain some residences. So we need to contain this matter. Uh, this DPA needs to apply, in our opinion, as I know you agree, to the principal sites only and we need to stop this trend because there's been three acquisitions since this time, since this time uh, by two institutions and uh, we need to, oh, we're working very vigorously, Councillor Moran and members, to ensure that this matter is corrected. I believe that the Minister has, um, uh, uh, through his own ministerial discretion, without taking this back to Parliament, the ability to amend so that this can be changed and that's clearly what I'm working on your behalf to achieve so the Minister can exercise his discretion. I'll take questions on this matter, members. Uh, no, I'm not doing it. Okay, so members, I hope that answers your question. Councillor Moran, thank you for that. That's a very timely matter. Members, do we have any further questions without notice? We don't. So members, I will move you on to motions on notice, item 10.1. Councillor Martin. Uh, yes, thank you, Lord Mayor. I uh, withdraw that motion. Thank you, Councillor. Um, next item is 10.2, Councillor Martin. Uh, ditto, Lord Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Martin. So, members, I now look to you motions without notice. Councillor Mullaney. Just a, a brief one, Lord Mayor. Um, I was just wondering if the Council could bring back, um, it could be through e-news, um, a update on how the council is engaging with business to uh, register for the electoral roll by the due date of August, which is in, in about sort of 10 to 12 weeks time, 10, 11 weeks time. Councillor, I will enable the question, but I would have encouraged you. Is that nice you. a motion? Bring back to council. Well, you are moving a motion. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Um, uh, an update on how council is engaging businesses to register for the electoral roll by the August deadline. What 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 campaigns that we you know? Okay, so councillor, before we look for a seconder, can you just please look to your iPad to determine whether that's been captured correctly? The motion. On how council is engaging business to register the electoral roll by the closing date. Perfect. Thank you. 
Okay, given that, yes, you're seeking, update, yeah. Yeah, given that you're seeking an update, I will accept the motion, Councillor Rowan, so I will seek a seconder. Well, you don't need to accept it, I'm pulling up. I'm already doing it, but aren't we already doing that in our election? I just want an update on, because it's a deadline that's I've got a date, and I just want an update on what we're doing to promote the opportunity for them to register on that. On the roll. Okay, that's quite a reasonable motion, members, and it is somewhat timely in, that, in nature. So you've got a second of a council, Moran. Do you wish to speak? I don't really need to say too much. I'd just like an update on what council administration are doing to engage businesses. Okay. <laughs> members, that's relatively straightforward. Council Wilkinson, you want to debate or you want to vote? Uh, I want to speak to Bob. Okay, speak to, yes, please do. Um, I, I think this is, thank you, Councillor Malani, for this. I think a lot of the best time out business. Uh, I know lessee, and I think a lot of people in business owners, lessees, find out about it around the time they're gearing up to vote. Then they get to oh, that you were meant to register and roll three months ago. So um, I really concur with that. Council Mines push on that. I think it's, it's unfair on those uh, business, business operators. But I may do that once I'm on the roll with other people who have moved into new leases. and. So get the council bill notes, but not, not the uh, reminder about the, uh, the, the voting thing. I, I really think we ought, to, we ought to be so proactive in that um, you know, at the time we're providing the council rates notices, we're actually advising about being on the wrong. Thank you, Councillor Wilkinson. Councillor Abiyad. Uh, thank you, Lord Mayor. Just to add uh, my support to this uh, to this motion, it's really important to note that at the last council election, out of seven and a half thousand voters, only two thousand businesses voted. Uh, we have about twelve thousand ratepayers that are in the business community in the city of Adelaide, and that um, lack of lack of participation is a combination mainly of confusion uh, and also potential, uh, you know, complete separation sometimes from the local government aspect and how they can better engage. I think it's important to note that the electoral, uh, the electoral roll is very simple. People can check online whether they're registered on the electoral roll or not. Uh, they can also amend their electoral uh, roll details as required as residents in the city of Adelaide. Businesses have no mechanism of doing that online. They can simply register currently on our website, but there's no way for them to check if they're registered. Um, and it's a very confusing process. You have to get in touch with the administration, email them directly, follow it up to be able to get an outcome on that. So I think anything that would make it easier uh, to allow more people to participate in the democratic process, especially when we're talking about uh, elections that are not compulsory voting, I think is important. So if we're able to get a clear strategy on how that would occur, um, that would be really important. And I'm guessing, as a question will met through you, uh, will that come back also uh, highlighting what the strategy is to advertise the election for candidates and everything else? I know there's a, a budget line to deal with that. But will that be part of the same report or is that a separate process altogether? Allow me to refer that to the CEO. That's relatively procedural. That does happen every, every four years, yeah, of course. course. CEO, can you comment on that? Yeah, through you, Lord Mayor. We can incorporate that into the one report. No, sure. That's great. Thank you very much. Councillor Martin. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Uh, look, to inform Councillor Milani's request, the governance uh, people sent out a email to all elected members two weeks ago detailing the process. Perhaps uh, we could hear what it is that was in the email so Councillor Milani can then ask what further she requires. Well, you, I know I'm okay, I don't need that, thanks. Thanks, Darcy. Okay, well, it, might, it might form the basis of the report. So, members, any further debate? Councillor Milani, back to you. Thank you. Um, I appreciate this is a, an ongoing process and the administration are doing some, some great work on that. I, I respect that. I think the thing is, though, about getting businesses on the electoral roll in the first place as a deadline. And once it does take time, we have to inform the, the businesses. Um, residents are already on the electoral roll, property owners and ratepayers are already on the electoral roll. This is this is the one gap, I guess, in the in the electoral roll where it actually takes time to get this right. And I think we should give as much notice as possible. And we've all, we all know the process and there's going to be, we know that there's going to be a whole campaign about candidates running. But this is the one gap that there's a deadline and people miss out if they don't get the opportunity. So I want to make sure we're proactive about this. Um, if we get the update and we all collectively see that there's an opportunity to do more, then at least we'll have time to do something about it. 
which is why I just want a bit of a formal update, bring it back into the chamber. Thank you. Thank you, councillor. Members, I put this matter before you. Those in favour? Those against? We carry. Thank you, councillor Maloney. Members, any further motions without notice? There are not. Members, we have no matters to be treated in confidence. So without further ado, I will suggest that at 6.38pm I will formally declare this meeting closed of Tuesday the 8th of May. Members, thank you for your contribution.